Hi guys, so in this lecture, we're basically going to look at why do launchers that are taking a payload either to Earth orbit or even further always have multiple stages. We'll look at the principles behind this and then we will look at how to calculate how many stages you need to reach a certain delta V. As we saw earlier on our previous lecture on the rocket equation using this very graph, it's actually very hard for a single rocket to take any kind of payload to orbit. And that is due to the mass ratio needed to achieve a sufficient change in velocity with the specific impulse available in current technologies. What this means is that essentially, if you have a single rocket with enough fuel to take you to orbit, you won't have enough space or weight available to put any useful payload. This is where multiple stages rockets come along. Basically, any change in velocity achieved by a rocket is cumulative. What that means is that you can have a first stage that gets you some velocity, then you get rid of that first stage and a second stage ignites and gets you some additional velocity, then you get rid again of that stage and finally the third stage carrying the payload ignites to take you to your final destination. Currently, all launchers are actually multi-stage. They can be either in series, lighting one after the other, or in parallel, lighting all at the same time. So, what do current expandable multi-stage launch vehicles look like? Basically, the ones used by Ariane, Soyuz, and the thing that SpaceX is trying to get rid of by allowing the stages to land and the rockets to not be expandable anymore. This picture represents an expandable launch vehicle equipped with three stages. The last one carrying the payload section. As you can see, the first stage is much bigger than the other stages and carries a liquid engine and strap-on boosters. This is because this stage needs to compensate for the biggest gravity losses and aerodynamic losses. Once it is empty and it has done its job, it separates from the main rocket to let the second stage ignite. Once the second stage has done its job, the third stage ignites to place the payload into its orbit. So, in order to calculate how many stages of what size we are going to need to give a certain change in velocity to a rocket, the two following equations are very important. First of all, the rocket equation that we saw earlier, which states that the change in velocity delta V is equal to the specific impulse of the rocket motor multiplied by the Nipperian logarithm of the mass of that rocket at the start divided by the mass of that rocket at the end of the burn, once all the fuel has been burned. What equation is also really important is the propellant mass fraction. It is written F P and is equal to the Nipperian logarithm of the mass of the propellant delta m in kilograms divided by the mass of the propellant delta m in kilograms again plus the dry mass of the rocket. So what is the dry mass? The dry mass is basically in kilograms again and it is the mass of an empty rocket. So essentially just a structure without any fuel in there. The wet mass is actually the addition of the mass of fuel and the dry mass. So in multi-stages, the mass of the rocket, which we can see in the rocket equation above, which we said was called M start, is equal to the mass of the first stage plus the mass of the second stage plus the mass of the third stage plus the mass of the payload that we want to put into orbit. Here the masses M1, M2 and M3, which are the masses for each stage, are actually wet masses. So they are the dry mass of the stage, which is the mass of the structure of the stage, plus the propellant mass of that stage that we are going to burn when we take off and we ignite that stage. So let's look at an example of how to calculate the change in velocity that a multi-stage rocket can achieve. Here we'll assume that our rocket 
has a specific impulse of 2,800 meters per second and a dry mass of 12% the propellant load. So this rocket is a two stages rocket and has an initial launch mass of 149.85 tons. So let's apply the rocket equation to the first stage of the rocket to find out how much change in velocity that first stage can give us. So we fill in the equation, we want the delta V1, which is the delta V achieved by the first stage, and this is equal to the specific impulse of the first stage multiplied by the Niperian logarithm of the mass of the rocket at the start divided by the mass of the rocket at the end of the burn of the first stage. And that's the wet mass of the first stage plus the wet mass of the second stage plus the mass of the payload divided by the wet mass of the first stage plus the wet mass of the second stage plus the mass of the payload minus the mass of propellant burned of the first stage. And as we can see, basically doing the wet mass of the first stage minus the mass of the propellant burned in the first stage actually comes back to just adding in the dry mass of the first stage. So we fill in the numbers and that gives us a final change in velocity achieved by the first stage of 4793 meters per second. So now we have to do the same thing with the second stage in order to find out the change in velocity achieved by the second stage and that's delta V2. So applying the rocket equation, we can write that delta V2 is equal to the specific impulse of the second stage multiplied by the Niperian logarithm of the total mass of the rocket after the first stage has ejected, which is now the wet mass of the second stage plus the mass of the payload. And that's divided by the mass of the rocket at the end of the burn of the second stage and that's basically the dry mass of the second stage or the wet mass of the second stage minus the propellant mass of the second stage plus the mass of the payload. We can now fill in the numbers and we get a final change in velocity achieved by the second stage of 4809 meters per second. So adding delta V1 and delta V2 we can find that the total change in velocity achieved by our two stages rocket is 9,601 meters per second. And if you can remember from our orbital mechanics lecture, that's just enough to reach low Earth orbit. So this two stage launcher will actually put its one ton payload in low Earth orbit. And that would never have been possible with only one stage. So we just had a look at a solid multi-stage launcher. Let's now have a look at a multi-stage liquid launcher using nitrous oxide and unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine as a fuel. Okay, so here I'll give you two examples. One is a two-stage rocket, one is a three-stages rocket, and all their characteristics are on the right of the screen. We will assume they have a specific impulse of 3,200 meters per second, a dry mass of approximately 9% the propellant load, and if you conduct all the right calculations, which you can do basing yourself on the previous example, you will find that these two rockets accelerate to the same 9,600 meters per second as in the previous solid rocket example. So again, these rockets will take their payload to low Earth orbit, but they could never have done so with just a single stage. We can now move on to the next example, which is a liquid chemical multi-stage rocket example. In that case, we use liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. So you can see that now the specific impulse is much higher, about approximately 4,500 meters per second. And you have a single stage rocket on the right with a two-stage rocket as well. All their characteristics are displayed on the right of the screen. So we'll assume each of these rockets have a dry mass of 
10% their propellant load and you do all the calculations and you will see that this rocket will accelerate to 9600 meters per second again. So with liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, because the specific impulse is much higher, you can actually also have a higher mass ratio. And what that means is that a single stage can actually launch a payload in orbit. But it's actually much more efficient to do it with a two-stage because that allows to reduce the total launch mass. So I made this table for you to have something concrete and from the real world to compare what you just learned with. So you can see that I put in six of the most famous launchers, how many stages they were made of, and what were these stages themselves made of. So the Atlas Center, which launched a few satellites in 1962, was actually made of three stages. The first two liquid oxygen and RP-1, which is a kind of kerosene, and the last one with liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. So this was actually an all-liquid launcher. If you look at Saturn V, it's the, only the first stage uses, uses kerosene and the last two stages liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, but it's also a fully liquid launcher. Now looking at the space shuttle, which is very famous, I'm sure all of you will have seen some pictures and heard about it. Actually, it was only made of two stages. The first stage was these massive boosters and they were actually made of a solid chemical fuel. The last stage, which was the space shuttle engines, were basically using liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. So the last stage, the second stage, was actually liquid and the first stage was solid. If you look at Delta II, another very famous launcher, you had a first solid chemical stage followed by two liquid chemical stage, the last one being nitrous oxide and aerosene, which is also a very famous liquid fuel that is actually much more stable than the other ones and can be stored much more easily. Then we can look at Ariane 5. So here you have three stages. The first one was actually solid, the second one also liquid, and the third one liquid. Finally, looking at Long March, you had three stages as well, all of them liquid. So this slide is just to show you the relative size of different launchers and what they look like. You can see that Titan and the shuttle, if you include its boosters, were actually probably the biggest ones, followed by Delta, Atlas, Sea Launch and Ariane, and Taurus and Pegasus being the smallest ones. So I hope this was quite helpful, you understood most of the material. If you have any doubts about something or need any help or clarification somewhere, please do not hesitate to ask me. Thank you very much.